In this tutorial video clip, we'll present how to create a parametric tower. We'll be using Rhinoceros and Grasshopper, developed by Robert McNeil and Associates, and ARCHICAD, developed by Graphisoft. The new connection between Rhinoceros, Grasshopper, and ARCHICAD offers seamless bidirectional geometry transfer between these applications. After installing Rhinoceros with the Grasshopper add-on and ARCHICAD on your computer, Please make sure that the Grasshopper ARCHICAD Live Connection tool is also installed and running. Our design task is to develop a parametric tower design. The initial conceptual design in this example has already been started using Graphisoft ARCHICAD. We'll use Rhinoceros and Grasshopper to further develop the existing design. Please note that the building site and the conceptual hexagonal base of the tower have already been completed using ARCHICAD. Our task is to create a conceptual mass model of a high-rise building using the hexagonal base as already displayed in ARCHICAD. Please note that we've already installed Rhinoceros Grasshopper and ARCHICAD as well as the Grasshopper ARCHICAD Live Connection tool. Let's activate Grasshopper Connection in ARCHICAD from the Design Design Extras menu. Click the Start Connection button on the Grasshopper Connection Palette to start the live connection. Let's switch to Grasshopper and display the ARCHICAD tab page. Let's place the 2D Curve Parameter node. Let's select the Set 1 2D Curve option from the context menu of the node. As a result, only the ARCHICAD application window will remain on the screen. Grasshopper and Rhino will be hidden. This forces users to continue in ARCHICAD. We must click an element in ARCHICAD as it's displayed in the status bar at the bottom of the screen. Once we select the hexagonal polyline in ARCHICAD, both Rhinoceros and Grasshopper applications are visible again on the screen. This means that we successfully defined an ARCHICAD polyline for the Grasshopper 2D Curve parameter node. Please note that as soon as we establish a reference, the hexagonal view polyline geometry is instantly visible in the Rhino perspective view. Now let's continue and place a curve parameter node in Grasshopper and connect it with the parameter created earlier. With this, we've successfully converted the ARCHICAD polyline to a Grasshopper curve. Let's also add the linear array component and then add the unit Z component. These will create additional instances of the hexagonal shape vertically. Please note that the 3D window in Rhino provides instant visual feedback of the results. We would like to easily edit the vertical displacement of the hexagonal shapes, so let's add a number slider to the unit Z component. By using this slider, we may easily increase or decrease the distance between the hexagonal shaped slabs. Let's add another slider to control the number of stories in the tower. We'll enter 4 for the minimum and 20 for the maximum number of stories. Using this slider, we may increase or decrease the number of stories, and the changes are visible in the 3D view of Rhino. Let's continue and apply a rotation transformation in Grasshopper to create a twisted arrangement for the previously multiplied hexagonal shapes. As you may notice, by default, the rotation was performed using the Origo for the axis of rotation. To change this, We'll add the area component to modify the axis of rotation because we want to use the center of the hexagonal shape for the axis. We would like to apply various angles of rotation. In fact, we would like to increase the angle of the rotation towards the upper hexagonal slabs. We will add the series component in Grasshopper. We will not rotate this first hexagonal slab closest to the ground. As a result, we do not change the default value of the input parameter start. 
we leave it at zero. We'll use the step input parameter to define the increment between the values of the series. We must also define the total number for the series. This should be identical with the number of the hexagonal slabs. So, we'll connect the story number slider with the input parameter of the series component. Let's define degree units for the rotation input parameter. Please have a look at the perspective view in Rhino to explore the results. The hexagonal shaped slab polygon outlines are now rotated around their center point with different angles. We can use the rotation slider to modify the rotation angle of the slabs. We can also use the number of stories to modify the number of slabs. Finally, the height of story slider allows us to change the distance between the slabs. Please note that this tutorial video focuses on the Rhinoceros Grasshopper ARCHICAD connection plugin. Please check out the separate training materials for Grasshopper and Rhinoceros. Let's continue and add some intermediate division nodes along the perimeter of the hexagonal slab outlines using the Divide Curve component. These nodes will be used to define the geometry of the vertical load-bearing structure. We will add an integer number slider to define the number of division nodes. Now let's add a point list component in Grasshopper. This will display the index numbers of the previously created division nodes. Grasshopper generates a so-called index number for the division nodes, and we can display these using the point list component. The result is instantly visible in the perspective view of Rhinoceros. We need to adjust these index numbers due to some future design considerations. Currently, the indexes are increasing around the individual slab parameters. Let's add the flip matrix component to modify the arrangement of the index numbers. As a result, identical indexes will be assigned towards the vertical direction of the design. Due to the new index arrangement of the nodes, we'll be able to create a parametric load-bearing structure system for the tower, so it will follow the geometry of the rotated hexagonal slabs. You can now see that the green connection lines are displayed along the vertical direction, and they follow the angle of rotation of the slabs. Now the wireframe model of the tower is ready. Let's add the interpolate component in Grasshopper to create an interpolated curve through a set of points. Let's see how to transfer this parametric shape created in Rhinoceros and Grasshopper into a full-fledged building information model in ARCHICAD. Let's display the ARCHICAD tab in Grasshopper. Let's add the ARCHICAD slab component in Grasshopper. And this will transfer the rotated hexagonal polygon shapes into ARCHICAD slab building elements. The slabs are instantly generated in ARCHICAD there's no need for file export or import processes. The good news is that we may further develop the design in Rhino and Grasshopper, for example, adjust the number slides and so on, and the ARCHICAD slab building elements will instantly and automatically follow all the design changes. Let's continue and add a vertical load-bearing structure to the parametric tower. We add the ARCHICAD beam component in Grasshopper, and the results are immediately visible in the ARCHICAD 3D view. Individual beam elements are generated along the 3D splines. Please note that the beams that were generated are true beam elements and also visible on the floor plan view in ARCHICAD. Now let's continue the design in ARCHICAD. We'll modify some of the edges of the base polyline on the floor plan view. This is the polyline that we use in Grasshopper to create slab outlines. 
that are multiplied and rotated as well, before ARCHICAD slab elements are created. After clicking the Send Changes button on the Grasshopper connection palette, the updated slab outline is displayed in Rhino. Let's now switch to the 3D view in ARCHICAD. Please note that not only the geometry of all the slabs is updated here, but the vertical load-bearing beam structure is also changed automatically. Just imagine how much editing work that would have required using conventional design methods. Thanks to the new live connection between Rhinoceros, Grasshopper, and ARCHICAD, the changes presented were completed in seconds without any additional time or effort. Let's continue and adjust various settings of the elements created so far. There is a settings component available for each and every design component on the ARCHICAD panel in Grasshopper. Here's the slab settings component. Using these settings components, we can control the attributes and parameters of the ARCHICAD elements. Each input parameter on the left of the settings component corresponds to a parameter in the ARCHICAD tool settings dialog box. The right side of the settings node has a single output parameter, which transfers the input data to the slab component. First, we will modify the building material of the generated slab elements. For this, we place a building material input node onto the Grasshopper canvas. Input nodes are special interface elements that reference certain data from the ARCHICAD project, making it available to Grasshopper. The referenced data are continuously updated. Input nodes can be attached to setting nodes to control attributes such as building material, composite, pen, etc. An input node is divided into two parts. Click on its left side to select the node itself. Click on its right side to modify its stored data. For the slabs, we select the generic structural material. Next, we will modify the thickness of the slabs by feeding a numeric value into the thickness input parameter of the slab settings node. As soon as we connect the settings node to the generating slab component, the changes are applied to the ARCHICAD slabs generated earlier. Now it's time to make changes to the beam elements as well. Let's modify the width and height of the beam cross sections by using the beam settings component and a number slider. Settings components give access to the most important element parameters and attributes, but not all of them. The rest of the parameters can still be edited in ARCHICAD if necessary. Let's select the ARCHICAD slab component in Grasshopper. Please note that all the related slabs are instantly selected in ARCHICAD. If we take a closer look, we can see that all the slabs are selected but also locked in the ARCHICAD window. This is to make sure that designers won't make any accidental changes to those elements connected with the Rhino Grasshopper project. Let's use the Edit, Locking, Unlock command in ARCHICAD to unlock the selected slabs before editing. Now let's open the Slab Selection Settings dialog in ARCHICAD in order to edit the ARCHICAD properties of all the selected slabs in one step. We can change their floor plan or section options, adjust all IFC properties, and so on. Please note that there is an important conceptual difference between the Rhino design model and that of the ARCHICAD building information model. The perspective view in Rhino displays a preview model that provides visual feedback of the Grasshopper operations. The BIM environment of ARCHICAD, on the other hand, not only provides instant visual feedback on the design progress, but also enables architects to perform various editing operations as well. Thanks to the new bi-directional live connection, parametric freeform model components created in Grasshopper and Rhino can be instantly transferred to ARCHICAD as true BIM components. This enables architects to create, develop, and document algorithmic freeform building design in a professional BIM environment.